It started out as a night like any other, but as the hours ticked on while I sat in my office, I couldn't shake that sinking feeling that something was about to go down. That kind of feeling you get when your ice cream is just a little under-fried. You see, I, Detective Lucy Bogart, had been tasked with reviewing every SpongeBob SquarePants Flash game. A tumultuous task meant only for the craftiest of gumshoes such as myself. As can be expected, the case went off without a hitch, but even I couldn't foresee the conniving roadblock that thrust itself into the path of my paddy wagon. In the month of October, I found my schedule untimely lifted by a series of Halloween-related misadventures. The October winds blew harshly against me, but I found shelter in November. While I still yearn to uncover the mystery of this Demon Lucy girl, that would have to wait for a later time. My reputation was on the line, and I couldn't let my rival detective get a leg up on me. The book-smart Joe Hammett of the Anti-Lucy Club. Cunning as she could be, if you ask me, she should just stick to math. But that was when I discovered something. A Spongebob game unlike any other. It dated back to the ancient year of 2014, a year of which I had yet to venture into. Still, I couldn't ignore this case. My fingers were itching to give it a go. The kind of unsettling itch you feel when you can't find the pause button in a fighting game. So without delay, I threw on my detective cap and stereotypical trench coat before starting the game. That was when the memories came flooding back to me. Remember back when we looked at the AWE Spongebob movie game on PC? I really enjoyed the entrenched stage and thought the detective plotline could have been an episode in and of itself. It seems like Spongebob and detective games go together like bread and butter. One game I remember from Nick.com was Bikini Bottom Mystery Search, a Where's Waldo type of game where you had to search for suspects in a crowd. There were four stages and the select screen looked like the one from Trail of the Snail. It was fun, but not super involved. A standard open and shut case, if you will. But in January of 2014, Working Man gave us a very amusing detective story that had an additional spin to it. It was a play. The SquarePants Mysteries was highly detailed and had three episodes that were released over time. There were two separate versions of this, one for desktop and one for mobile, but with one key difference. See, the game has two different modes, story and arcade, but in the mobile version you only have arcade. It's also labeled as the SquarePants Puzzles instead of the SquarePants Mysteries. In arcade mode, you can play all the minigames from story mode, but you lose the context so they seem completely random. Imagine playing the mobile version first, you'd be extremely confused. But the story mode is really fascinating, so let's check it out. In this, you're putting on a show and you have to make sure your audience is pleased with it. As a result, everything has to run smoothly, otherwise your rating will go down and the audience will throw tomatoes at you. Happened in one of my high school shows. You get a ranking of 1 to 5 stars after every stage, accompanied by text telling you how well the show went. Generally, stages aren't too difficult, but the game does like to surprise you from time to time. So let's start at the beginning. The first chapter is called Who's Laughing Meow, and its icon is styled like a playbill. Really leaning into the A aesthetic there. When we start, we get a noir-style narration from SpongeBob. Enough to make you curse your underpants for not hugging you tight enough. Well, that's a really strange thing to say. Don't people usually hate it when their underpants are too tight? So we click to open the curtains and see this wedgie lover for ourselves. Our detective is in a very neat looking office as an audience watches on. If these guys were among those silhouettes, this would be a lot more interesting. And look, he's hogging the whole moon in his office. Come on, SpongeBob, the rest of Earth needs that. In the bottom corner, we can see our rating meter that goes up or down depending on how much the audience is enjoying the show. You should try to get it to five stars. The very first thing we have to do is throw trash at the door to answer it when someone comes knocking. I mean, how else are you gonna open a door? We even get an achievement for it. So Sandy and a baby Patrick come in to visit. Sandy says her pet snail Larry is missing- oh, sorry, her pet cat. They aren't snails in this game, but Spongebob doesn't want to take the case because he has more important matters to attend to. Then his hat, which is also a phone, starts to ring. Gosh, talk about inefficient. The ringing must seem awfully loud and abrupt when it happens right on top of your ears. So he answers the phone and talks to the person on the other end the same way I text people I have a crush on. It turns out the police chief called for his help with a crew of bandits downtown. This brings us to our next scene. Spongebob and Sandy shippers can also find some amusement in the next narration here. But then we head over to Squidward's house and meet a police officer played by Mrs. Puff. However, she refuses to tell us about the gang of cats causing mischief. Um, excuse me? We were kinda sent here to help out? 
Someone fire this woman. But then we get our first minigame. We have to narrow down a suspect from a list of cats. We get three hints and have to rule out the cats that don't correlate with them. For example, if we're told the suspect didn't have a spotted shell, we click on all the cats with spotted shells to rule them out. Kind of funny how we're calling them cats in this, but still acknowledging they have shells. We need a better costume department. But the minigame is straightforward enough. Then the cat itself shows up, but it only turns out to be Mrs. Puff's cat. Don't let her run up a tree this time. But she finally shows us a photograph of the cat gang, which is added to our evidence collection. Throughout every stage, you can click around the screen to try and select items that might count as evidence. But be careful. Clicking causes the dialogue to move faster, so you might end up skipping some while searching for collectibles. Then you'll miss humorous scenes like this. After all that, we have to search around the stage. This eventually leads up the nose of Squidward's house. But first, we need to build a ladder. That brings us to a mini game where we have 29 seconds to drag pieces of a ladder to spaces on a blueprint. Like the Guess Who mini game, it's straightforward, but still kind of fun. Not too hard to figure out. So then you climb up the nose and find a secret hideout. And in case you ever wanted to see Squidward dressed like Jessica Rabbit, well, here you go. Is it everything you ever hoped it would be? Here's looking at you, Squid. But this is a secret cat club that SpongeBob calls a squeak easy. Larry is the bartender too. No, not the cat, Larry. Gosh, that's gonna be confusing. But despite not being a cat himself, Larry says you aren't allowed in there. So you have to turn SpongeBob into a cat boy by dragging cat ears on him. <laughs> Well, that's easier said than done. But once you pass as a cat, you can ask about Larry, the cat, but Larry, the lobster, will only fully believe you if you can do the secret wiggle. But wait, I thought SpongeBob said he didn't have time to take on the Larry case. I thought this was a separate case entirely. Meh, the story is confusing. Anyway, we have to wiggle. This leads to a minigame that's a bit more challenging than the ones before it. You watch Larry pose, then you click the icon that matches whatever move he made. It isn't too long, but one mistake will send you back to the start, so make sure you pay attention. Once you master the secret wiggle, Larry tells you that the cat gang hangs out in the kelp forest, so that's where you need to go next. But first, we need a green jacket to match the other gang members. One magically spawned on us when we did the wiggle, so we have to sneak out with it. To serve as a distraction, we cut this light and wreck the place. Hey, why didn't we just order a Krabby Patty and get thrown out with it? That worked last time. But now we head to the kelp forest and meet the Russian Catboy Plankton. He's guarding a gate and we need to get through. The password is an answer to a knock-knock joke, so you have to figure it out. Okay, you have to figure it out at lightning speed. They barely gave me any time to read those. But you have to answer three knock-knock jokes. It's weird because the first two answers have to do with being let inside, but the third one is completely different. It's more random guessing than anything then. You might have to try the stage a few times to get a perfect score. But once you're in, you find Larry, the cat, among the cat gang. Mr. Krabs is also the cat leader. With him and the other Larry being involved, I can only assume cats and crustaceans have created some sort of alliance. Now that would be devastating for humanity. But Larry, the cat, is there because he wants the leader's flower. SpongeBob assumes it's for his mom. So to reach the leader, we get a minigame where we click to guide SpongeBob through a maze of evil cats. It isn't really complicated, you just avoid them and walk to the exit. And look at his face the entire time. But once you're done with that, you fight the cats by flinging trash around the screen. Eh, wouldn't be the first time Spongebob beat the daylights out of a cat. Or the second. But then you destroy everything and get the flower. Then Larry eats it. Well, his motivation seemed as good as any. The things you do for a tasty snack. So we head back to our office to return Larry to Sandy. We don't even charge her for it. But then Larry spits out the flower and the stage comes to an end. Now that was interesting enough, but there are still two chapters remaining. They all follow the same story, but center around different tasks. And when we check out chapter two, Keep Calm and Monster Mash, we see a very familiar face. Hmm, could that be the monster from Monster Island in our midst? The SpongeBob Flash game lore sure is deep. We start this chapter back in our office, and there's a TV this time, played by Patrick. 
The first thing you have to do is throw trash away, but as you can see, I threw one in a spot I couldn't exactly select it from again. So much for that, I guess. Not to mention some trash can get stuck on the top of the door. But anyway, Spongebob hears that monsters are in Bikini Bottom, so he has to fix his TV signal to see the full news report. We then get a very interesting minigame where we have to mess with the antennas and slider to find the news channel through all the static. It's pretty fun to fiddle around with everything. So once you find the channel, you hear that monsters are attacking and you need to save Nuke Help City. Ugh, don't they already have a bubble problem to deal with? And besides, what kind of detective goes out to deal with monster- Okay, yeah, Batman. Batman, yeah. So we head downtown and see a crowd. And Larry for some reason. Surprisingly, everyone likes the monster and thinks it's a cool tourist. You stack a few oil drums so you can stand on them and see what's going on. We then see the monster about to eat Old Man Walker, who's gladly posing for it. Then we have to reach the monster to save people before it can eat them. This brings us to a Frogger-inspired minigame where we have to cross the road in a big chasm. That's inconvenient to have in your city. And these cardboard pedestrians make some funny sounds when you hit them. This one's a lot of fun, but after we deal with it, we find a flyer for a restaurant called Chewy Louie's. We head over to it and get met with a very unique stage. The monster attacks, so we take cover and hit objects to get cans. You gotta be quick, or else... Nothing like a little jump scare in our Spongebob game. But you fling cans at the monster to make it back off. Eventually, it heads to the back room and you need to follow it. But first, you need to enter a code to unlock the door. After searching around, you find the code and have to put it in through another minigame. The code is represented through letters, so you punch in the numbers that correlate with them. Simple enough. Then once we're in, we find... Oh no, it's the Tails doll. This detective story just got a whole lot more intense. Nah, it's actually the circuit breaker. So we actually get a really fun minigame this time. We have to turn tiles so they connect colored wires together. You do one color at a time and have to have them all connected by the end. It isn't too hard, but it's enough to get your brain moving. I like this one. Then once the lights are on, we can see this room is filled with junk. Among these pieces of junk are monster costumes, so we can assume the culprit isn't actually a giant monster. <laughs> oh, that was an ominous laugh. And here comes the fleshy armored monster. You rapidly click to knock its armor off, then you fling trash at it. Sometimes it hits, sometimes it doesn't. Not sure why it misses sometimes, but I hit the monster eventually, so it isn't too bad. Once you destroy it, the puppeteer comes falling down from the rafters, still in the first monster's costume. Now it's time to call in the police. Oh hey, Larry's watching us. I'm sure that doesn't mean anything. So once we unmask the monster, we find it to be... Sandy? I knew it. Never trusted that squirrel. But when she speaks, she has a plankton-colored text box. Hmm. Yeah, it's actually Russian Catboy Plankton disguised as Sandy. And oh, that's a strange-looking piece of evidence. But after the police leave, you see a letter fall from a truck. It seems to be a letter from someone telling Plankton to clear everyone from New Kelp City. It was sent by someone named L. Oh, no way. L from Death Note is conspiring against us? I didn't know Spongebob was Kira. He also has this catchphrase where he says, you can't spell solution without S-P-O-N-G-E-B-O-B. -B -B. Yeah, that really rolls off the tongue. And by the way, there are only two characters in this game who have names that start with L, so that narrows the suspect down quite a bit. Unless it was Chewy Louie. I knew it. Dr. Louie was forced to start a new life after the Invertebrate Rebellion, and he's longed for revenge ever since. It figures. But that concludes Chapter 2 and brings us to our final installment, Two Puffs Too Many. It starts with Spongebob going back to Chewy Louie's, which Larry and Patrick are working at. Larry offers us a free Krabby Patty, so we get a fun minigame where we have to catch the falling ingredients on a bun to stack them up. You have to get it at least 40 layers high, then it's pivotal that you also catch the top bun. I love games like this, so I really enjoyed this one. Though I can't believe we got a burger this big for free. But actually, there's a twist. We got one patty for free, but we're charged for four other patties and all the separate condiments. Clever, Larry. Very sneaky. But then your ear-destroying phone rings again. It turns out there's something going on at Snail Po headquarters. I wonder if they feel... a disturbance. But before we go, we throw the burger at Spongebob. That's fun. 
So at the Snail Po headquarters, we see a golden Snail Po can on display. I imagine it's Snail Po mixed with that edible gold stuff. And hey, I thought these were cats. Why are they eating snail po? The vision is blurring, SpongeBob. But then the totally real Officer Puff enters and offers to help guard the snail po. Then night falls and the lights go out. The perfect time for a thief to strike. You swing your flashlight around until you see Patrick, who SpongeBob believes to be the thief instead of Mrs. Puff here. As such, you chase Patrick in the next minigame. You run after him in a maze and shine your flashlight on him to diminish his silhouette. He slowly reveals himself as you chase him, so eventually you see who it is. Also, I love this Patrick model. It just looks so friendly. And this stage is really easy, so you can finish it pretty quickly. But it turns out Patrick is just the janitor and the thief made off with the golden snail po. SpongeBob accuses Officer Puff of stealing it, so he heads to her house to investigate. There, he finds the place ransacked. But after flinging objects that are barricading a closet door, we free the real Mrs. Puff from inside. Then the fake one shows up and SpongeBob has to figure out who the real one is. Guess it's time to get the tartar sauce again. So to prove who the real one is, the Puffs engage in a competition where they try to fully inflate themselves before the other one can. This game is really confusing and easy to get wrong on your first try though. You have to repeatedly click and hold to grow yourself, but you stop every once in a while to catch your breath. You might not know what you're doing wrong when the imposter speeds ahead of you every time, but then you might realize you actually just need to hit the mouse as hard as you can. That matters more than holding it. It's much easier once you figure that out. So after exposing the faker, you unmask them to find that they're actually Squidward. Ha, huh, I never trusted Jessica Rabbit. But actually, she was just sent there and doesn't know where the Golden Snail Po is. That brings us back to square one. So we head back to our office, and the game takes an interesting turn. First you dig through all your papers, which is really fun, but then Spongebob decides to take a trip to the past so he can remember what happened. Not sure how they're doing that flashback effect in a stage play, though. He recalls that Larry, the cat, has been at nearly every suspicious location, but of course, this isn't enough to incriminate him. We have to put all the pieces of evidence together to verify that he is, in fact, the one behind this. So we look at all the evidence we've collected over the last three chapters. You click around and do your best to connect evidence that points to the suspect. Once you're able to do that, SpongeBob knows for sure that Larry is behind this. The cat, that is. So we head downtown to confront him, being hit by a tumbleweed in the process, but an army of cats comes after us. We then throw yarn at them, activating a minigame. You're in the street and the cats are coming toward you, so you shoot yarn at them. If any of them get past you, you have to start over. They also make some weird meows. It's a little challenging because the yarn doesn't fly straight ahead of you, but rather to the right, so you have to get the hang of that. But once you do, you can easily win. And once that's over, the cats clear out and SpongeBob sees Larry through a window. Inside, he finds Larry has taken a date to a fancy restaurant. So that's why he needed the flower and golden snail po. He also had the town cleared out to avoid disturbances. SpongeBob finds this gesture so sweet that he tells the cat he can do whatever he wants. Frankly, I agree. If a cat made the entirety of New York clear out so he could spend time with another kitty, all while committing several crimes in the process, he's completely in his own right to do so. Who are we to judge the silliness of the kitten? Then Sandy shows up, everyone has a happy ending, and that concludes the adventure. But hey, we can still print out these sheets to build our own clue boards. Or maybe don't do that. Technology, huh? And that wraps up the Squarepants Mysteries. And what a game that was. With a great style, detailed backgrounds, a creative setting, and a fair bit of humor, this is a really enjoyable game to go through. Even the music is really catchy. The stories are also intriguing, even if Larry was a predictable culprit. Still, you can't deny how clever the outcome is. The theater atmosphere is also a nice touch. 
I even like the concept of trying to put on a good show with every performance affecting how you're rated. It's like a theater simulator while also having its own storyline, along with minigames. The whole game is far more involved than I expected it to be. I really commend all the effort that went into it. The minigames might not be the most thrilling things you'll experience, but this is worth playing for the charm, clever writing, interesting concept, and fun gameplay mechanics. I can say I thoroughly enjoyed this one. We still have many other Spongebob Flash games to get through, and as we work our way through the rest of them, I hope to see many more that are just as involved and fun to play through as this was. I have a few more cases that demand my attention, including the rest of 2014, but for now, be sure to subscribe, follow me on the accounts in the description below, and tune in to our next installment. Thank you for joining me, I will see you in the next memory.